Hi there, it's John Bice with the Florida for Boomers Network and EXP Real Estate here in absolutely beautiful Sarasota, Florida. And as I always do, it's March. And let me check this out for you. It is a beautiful 78 degrees today. Just absolutely spectacular. But hey, if you're finding us here on YouTube, we uh, market heavily to baby boomers, but really to everybody that's considering making a move to Florida. Um, you can subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell and you'll get a notification every time we put a video out. So if you look right here, this is actually my YouTube channel living in Sarasota, Florida. There's all kinds of videos on here, information uh, about living in the area, cost, what are the taxes? You know, of course we put catchy little phrases on there, you know, but it's a lot of information. I talk about places uh, that we like to go to the beach, where the sandbars are out in Sarasota Bay, restaurants we love, a lot of things, but mostly about you relocating here or being a snowbird in Florida. So lots of good information. But Ryan put out a uh, snowbird guide today. So you might have received this in your email. So I wanted to cover it and talk to you about it. Okay. So snowbird slash slow bird. What that means is people who come here from the north, east, midwest to escape the absolute miserable weather you have and come down here and enjoy 78 degree temperatures in March. Okay. So snowbird season starts really, it depends on a couple of things, but typically the first of November, we start seeing people coming in. Now, some people don't like to be away from family for Thanksgiving or maybe Christmas. So they come in the first of January. That's when things get real heavy on the interstate. So um, that's really when season is. So you could say November 1st, it starts. Now it typically runs through. Easter is when about 50% of the snowbirds, maybe even 60% of them will head back home. So we have an early Easter this year, right at the end of March. So they're going to be heading out early. The other date that they typically go by is Mother's Day. After Mother's Day, poop, everybody's gone, Boop, just like that. So um, we know that they're leaving because we start to see all the RVs on the interstate towing their cars back to the frozen tundra. So uh, that's when snowbird season is. That's when we start heading back to the beaches. We start heading back to the restaurants because it's not just absolutely packed here anymore. How many snowbirds come to Florida? I've heard that our population in this area, in the Sarasota, Bradenton area, which is Manatee and Sarasota County, goes up by about 25%. Now, with that being said, it's a little skewed now because we have had such an influx of people since 2020. Um, our population has gone up tremendously. I will tell you that they are building every single place that they can possibly buy a piece of land. They're building on it right now. And to my friend that likes to tell me it's swamp land. No, it's actually farmland that they're building on. And um, yeah, it's going crazy. Apartments going up everywhere, but single family homes, villas in every direction. Now, a lot of people ask me why everything is to the east, primarily of I-75. Well, if you were here in the 70s, 80s, 90s, I moved to this area in 92. Everything was to the west of I-75. There was nothing to the east of I-75. When I moved back here, I was a partner with Outback Steakhouse. They moved me back here from Las Vegas in 1999. I moved there in uh, January 1st of 94, actually. Um, a friend of mine told me, 
hey, we'll go look at Lakewood Ranch. Of course, we were going to be looking for a home. And I'm like, what's Lakewood Ranch? And uh, she said, it's east of the interstate on University Parkway. Well, when we left here, University Parkway ended at I-75 and it was a dirt road to get out to the polo fields, literally going through palmetto bushes and everything to get out to the polo field. It was crazy. Um, and we come back and at that point there were 2,500 homes in Lakewood Ranch. Um, one of these new communities now, they call them villages, but communities, the Dell Webb and Lakewood Ranch by itself has 1,200 homes. So you can kind of see how it's grown over the years. So, but anyway, getting back to the numbers, yeah, about 25% more people here during snowbird season, but we've had a tremendous influx of people to Florida as well since the whole COVID nonsense. Um, how long can snowbirds stay? Now, I, I'm not going to tell you anything about Canadian snowbirds because their, their rules are so goofy. I, I have no clue about any of that, but a snowbird typically is here for less than six months. The vast majority of them are here from the 1st of January through Easter. And again, depending on the weather, if you're having really severe winter weather early, they start coming in earlier. And if, if the winter is continuing on, they stay longer. But again, Easter is typically the time, I mean, the day after Easter, 50 to 60% of slow birds are heading back north. And then Mother's Day is the other uh, date where they tend to poop, head, head out of here. Okay. So there's no rule really to how long American snowbirds can stay here. Again, I don't know anything about Canadian rules. Don't want to know anything about Canadian rules, but a regular snowbird, you can stay here as long as you want. Should snowbirds get local IDs? Well, that's a loaded question. Now, if you're buying a home here and you want to save a ton of money on taxes, this is a slippery slope, but you, you can declare this as your homestead, but you can only have one homesteaded property in the country. Now, I don't know the rules in New York and Taxatusets and Jersey and all that about homesteading. I have no clue, but in the state of Florida, you can homestead. That locks your taxes in so they can't go up more than 3% per year. I did a listing presentation on a home yesterday. It's probably worth $250,000 more than my home. Their property taxes are $200 more than mine. Why is that? They bought that home in 19... 1997, I believe it was, 96 or 97, and homesteaded the home. So they've owned it for that long, and their property taxes have only gone up 3% a year if they went up at all. So their home that's worth a quarter of a million dollars more than my home, they only pay $200 more a year in taxes. So that's a perfect example how it works. So, yes, you can get. IDs, if you're going to declare this as your homestead, there's some crazy rule in Ohio about six months and a day, and that has nothing to do with the state of Florida. But if you're going to come here and declare this as your homesteaded property, again, they check this out. Do not, do not try to play a game with them because they will hunt you down and find this out, and it's a big time crime. So one property in the country, you can homestead it. What you do the day after you close on a property here, again, you have to check the rules in your state about have you done something for homesteading there. But if you don't have that or you've sold that home up there and you're moving here the day after closing, you can go get your IDs. Then you get your first power bill. They're going to ask you for several forms of ID. You can take your sales paperwork with you and go down, you make an appointment and you can homestead that property and become citizens of the state of Florida and then start taking advantage of the huge tax breaks that you can get. No state tax, no city tax, no car tax. My favorite, exiting tax. Crazy. 
Okay, how does healthcare work for snowbirds? I don't know. That's a good question, especially for Canadians. Again, their taxes and everything that they pay for um, their cover everybody insurance. We were in Italy a couple of years ago. Their tax rate is 51%. 51%. But they have government-run healthcare. Crazy, right? Uh, so I don't know if it's like that in Canada or not. Now we have every healthcare provider that you can possibly think of here in this area. Um, just in Liquid Ranch alone, I believe they said the other day we took a tour with some buyers uh, that there's 700 doctors in Lakewood Ranch of every type: heart doctors, anything that you can think of. So um, yes, we have the healthcare here. Before you move here, I would highly, highly recommend that you get your uh, specific doctors set up, transferred, who are you going to use, um, just so you have that taken care of before you get here. So that's uh, one thing. But other than, you know, the health care, how it works for snowbirds, I don't think it's any different. If you've got insurance coverage and you need, you know, to go to the hospital, you got your insurance card. So that's about as deep as I'm going to get into that one. Um, most popular snowbird destinations in Florida. Now, Ryan says Fort Myers, Jacksonville, which we call Southern Georgia, if you're a Floridian, Orlando, which I think would probably encompass the villages, um, and then Tampa. I don't agree with... Um, Tampa and Jacksonville, but Orlando, I could see it being really crowded. The villages being really crowded, Fort Myers and Naples gets unbelievably packed during snowbird season. I was just working with some folks who moved up this way from the Naples area. And they said, just going to Publix, it's a team event because one person gets out of the car and the other person just circles the parking lot, just hoping to find a parking spot. So that's how nutty and crowded it is. The Dell Webb that's located in Naples is 11 miles east of I-75. So if you can figure 11 miles getting back to the interstate and then probably another 15 to 20 miles to get to the beach of Naples and through that crowd. Yeah, crowded, very, very crowded. So I think the Sarasota area is very popular. I think St. Petersburg and Clearwater are very, very popular. Um, the other coast, I think probably Vero Beach, Daytona Beach, um, West Palm Beach area, Fort Lauderdale. I think those are all very popular as well. And I think a lot of this is controlled. A lot of people come down here for spring training for baseball, believe it or not. So the other coast has their teams. And then we have ours here. We have the Rays and the Red Sox. The Braves are here. The Baltimore Orioles are here. But um, on the other coast, you have the Astros and the Cardinals and uh, Marlins are over there. So I think a lot of that is controlled by people coming down wanting to watch some baseball. Finding rentals for snowbirds. Well, this used to be fairly easy to do. I'm going to tell you that the prices during snowbird season are double monthly what they are for an annual rental. I would say at least double. Um, harder and harder to find because so many people who could not either afford a home, find a home at the right time, um, are testing out the waters here, are renting now. So that market is pretty saturated. Now I'm not telling you they're not out there. They definitely are. But uh, long-term seasonal rentals, I think are going to be harder to find if you don't already have a connection there. Now, if you're thinking of purchasing a home, condo, villa, whatever, to be a snowbird and thinking that you're going to rent it out during summertime, 
get that thought right out of your head. Just forget about that because people aren't going to come here during the summertime and rent. And plus you have to know the rental restrictions within your community. Um, can you rent for, you know, if you buy in a Dell web, you can rent it. I think it's a minimum of, don't quote me on this, but I think it's a minimum of 30 days and you can only do it a couple of times a year. So you definitely have to know the rules of when you can rent during snowbird season, during the year. It, does it have to be an annual rent? Do you have to own the property for a certain amount of time before you can rent it? Um, but get that out of your head that you're going to rent it during the summertime because you're not. Because people who come here for the summer are primarily going to be families bringing their kids, going to be wanting to be near the beach and have a condo with a pool and all those type of things. And they're here for one week. They're not here for four months. So um, I have people ask me that all the time. Well, you know, we're going to be snowbirds because can we rent it for the summertime? No. Don't even think about that because you're, it's, it's not going to happen. It's just not, you're going to have a horrible experience trying to do that. Um, buying a winter home in Florida. Well, that's what we're talking about. Maintaining the home is something that I want you to think about as well. If you're purchasing in one of these 55 plus communities, the Del Webb Lakewood Ranch, it's $409 a month for HOA fees. 24 hour gated security. All of your yard work is done for you. Everything is done on the outside of your house. They even set the sprinkler system for you. And then use of the amenities. So 409 per month, that doesn't stop when you're not here. So if you're not going to be here for six months of the year, you're paying $409 per month for those six months that you're not here. If you purchase a home with a pool, my pool guy is $120 a month. So that's another. So now you're up to $529 a month. Um, if you have a home watching service while you're away, somebody, unless you got great neighbors that will go over and check your house, like I check the house across the street. Um, but they have services here that'll go and check and make sure, hey, the water heater's uh, okay. It hasn't nothing's leaking. Um, they water plants, they do all kinds of stuff. So they make sure the pool guy's been there. Um, so that's a fee too. So you got to consider those things if you're going to buy it and don't forget about insurance and don't forget if you're a snowbird, you can't homestead your property. So your property taxes are going to be much higher than ours. Uh, my property taxes are about 1.6% of my assessed value. I would say, especially in a place like a Lakewood Ranch, where there's a CDD fee, you would be in that 2 to 2.2% of your assessed value. Now, remember, CDD fee is included in the taxes. So if you see a tax bill of $8,000 for the year, that includes that uh, CDD fee. So um, those are things to consider. Hey, do you want to have that $409 a month bill when you're not here? So um, all of these communities are going to have some sort of HOA fee. Now, my HOA fee in my community, my community was built in the 80s. The fee here is $470 a year. We don't have the lawn service, you know, the lawn's taken care of. I'm not in a gated community. Uh, we don't have some huge clubhouse to go to. I wish we had all those things, but we don't. But then again, I don't have the fees to go with that. So you have to keep that in mind, the expenses of maintaining two homes. A lot of people come here, not a problem. They don't care. Um, and that's about Ryan. There you go. Somebody to keep an eye on the place. If you do purchase here and uh, you want one of those services, just let me know. If you are thinking about renting, let me know. I'll give you, I don't do rentals, but I can refer you to two property management companies that do do rentals. They can help you out. You tell them, hey, we're looking for a two bedroom, two bath. And this is 
approximately the price we want to pay per month. This is our budget. And then they'll tell you what they have available that fits your needs. But yes, I can refer you to people to watch a home if you do buy it. Um, yeah, we talked about that. Renting it out during the summer. Don't even think about that. Choosing your state residence has to do with um, the homesteading. And again, I don't know your rules in the Northeast, the Midwest, California. I don't, I don't know rules there, but trust me, they're going to research. If you homestead your home here, they're going to research that and they're going to find out if you have that advantage in another state as well. And so, yeah, just don't do that. Okay, so... Snowbirds, slowbirds, if uh, you have any other questions, I'm happy to answer them for you. I think that covered a lot. Um, I do highly recommend being in one of those communities that uh, they do all your yard work for you. Um, they maintain everything on the exterior of the home, bushes, edging, mowing the grass, trimming the trees, doing all those things. So I do recommend that. Now you can have a guy like my guy who comes, you know, during the uh, summer months comes every week because that's when we get all our rain and the grass goes crazy. So, um, yeah, but let's put a plan together. Call me, email me, text me. Um, if you ask a question on YouTube, you got to let me know a way to contact you um, or look me up and contact me because I get questions on there. Um, and I can answer them, but it's much better if I talk to you, I think. I mean, I give you more of a detailed answer instead of typing something in on YouTube, you know, so that that would be what I recommend. I'm pretty easy to find. You've got my email, not my email, my uh, YouTube channel now. So, um, yeah, just reach out. I'm happy. I, I always tell my clients I am absolutely full of worthless real estate information. So reach out to me at any time and I'm happy to answer. You can't ask me a question. I don't think unless you're a Canadian and you want to know about how long you can stay here. Um, I think I can answer your questions for you. Okay. So let's find you a place down here in paradise. Come down and enjoy this amazing weather. I look forward to hearing from you and working with you and being a complete resource for you as far as uh, what you're looking for here in the state of Florida. It's beautiful here. I love living in Sarasota, Florida. Okay. I hope to hear from you soon. God bless. Take care. Have an amazing weekend. Bye-bye.